right, we're ready to get the second half underway, and they have the kickoff by Junction City with a non non-stop running clock now. Goes out of bounds, I believe, at the 35-yard line, and that's where Spring Hill will go to work first and 10. And, of course, this should be a fast-moving well, now the clock, there we go, it's running now. Should be a fast-moving second half with Junction City leading 55-7. to seven. Spring Hill has ball, 35-yard line, first and 10, shotgun, quarterback number 10, dropping back, throws, and incomplete. Well, and that one probably should have been caught. Incomplete, bring up second down. The Dragons in the game for Junction City. Uh, we talked about this late in the first half. Jacob, a lot of people going to be shuffling in and out. 68, Michael Smith is in. Uh, Chad Butler, number 80 in, Akeem Gibson, and still a couple of, uh, I guess this is the first unit, guys. I see uh, Rogers still in the game, or actually he would uh, be second straight. He's in the game now for Junction City. All right, another pass attempt. This one is caught, and a good tackle, very good tackle by very the Butler. Tackle. Chad Butler on the tackle. Good It'll be about a right six-yard, seven-yard gain, second, uh, third down and about four. Spring Hill coming out in the shotgun now. That Completely different from the uh, bone and triple option offense they were running in the first half. And, uh, you know, you have to think that this Junction City defense, especially the second unit guys, are used to it. They have to see it in practice every day. All right, the same thing again. Another pass. This one's caught in some good licks being delivered. Rodgers and Sam Williams on the tackle there. And it's going to bring up fourth It'll down for the Bears, which I'm pretty sure – Safe to say, fourth and one, and you're down 48. They're going to go for ah, it. Uh, yeah, it's safe to say. Colton Pratt, 63 in the game. Number 21 for Junction City. Vontae Smith also in there on this fourth and one attempt for the Bears. Dragons dig in. Shotgun quarterback is going to keep it. He fumbles, and he's going to pay for that. Number 68. Mr. Smith, man, that big, you need to call him Mr. On the tackle, and I believe that was 32 also for Junction City. Or I saw a 32 there, I believe. 82. 82, excuse me, 82. And that was Mr. Mike Williams. And the Dragons will take over on offense. Great field position. Ball is on the 43-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Clock running 920 left in the third quarter. Junction City up 55-7. And the Dragons... This will be win number 20 in a row, and it'll match their conference winning streak of 20 in a row. The uh, 20 in a row overall is the second longest in school. No, excuse me, it's the longest in school history. The conference streak of 20 wins, second longest. We got a flag on the play. Let's see what's happened here. Delay a game. And it's a delay a game back the Dragons up. The Longest conference winning streak in Dragon history, 2001 to 2005, 23 games. Next week, they'll go back in conference and try to keep that going. Right now, I'm trying to pick up, like I said, or uh, will we'll pick up, excuse me, win number 20 in a row. All right, Dragons on offense. The give is to 21 there. And that's Mr. Smith, and he's got some running room. And he's going to go down. Man, he's out of bounds. Flag on the play. I'm not sure. Got a I'm, I'm not sure what the flag is on. I'm not either. But Devontae Smith with an excellent run right there. And that will be a holding on the Dragons. But an excellent run by Smith. And showing some good moves. Made, made something out of nothing. Yes. He should have been bottled up in the backfield, made a couple of moves. But it will be negated by a holding penalty. And it's still going to – it's going to be uh, – a spot penalty. It will be put at the 39-yard line. So it's going to bring up a. That should be. Okay. Well, never mind. I thought it's third down. It's going to be second down and about five for the Dragons. Here's a give to Williams. He's running hard. He's got a first down. Spins out of a tackle. Picks up two more yards. And here yeah, comes another uh, flag. Late flag again. I have a question. Is there a min? Is there like a, a quota? How many flags they throw in a game? You know the. Well, I'm, <laughs> that's a good question. But I was about to ask you if there was a quota for how many running backs Junction City can have that can carry the ball on any on any given play. Well, I tell you what, I don't believe there is because we're seeing an abundance of them. And notice we're using pretty big words here. I like I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with myself right now using that word. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's the thing about it. This team is deep in the skill positions. You know, guys stepping up. And, and, and this is something we have covered every game this season. The speed 
and the amount of skilled players Junction City can put on the field here. I mean, these are yeah. this is second, and I hate to say third. I really hate to say second, third unit guys, but these are the backups, and these guys are doing a real good job. I mean, a very good. This is their chance to shine. You hear you hear about you know the Dancies, the Bells, the Holyfields, and then in your second half you see guys like Chad Butler, and even in the first half with Javante Rogers and both Bo Hooks both contributing in big right. ways with by catching some passes. Right, and we got a fumble. I believe it's going to be a little like it's going to be recovered by Spring Hill. It is Spring Hill to recover a little mischange there instead of exchange, and. Yes, the Bears got it, so they'll take over. And you know, like Chad Butler a while ago, let's talk about his play there, the tackle he made. That, that's solid form tackling. And that's what Coach Carpenter, Coach Smith, you know, they want to see that. They want to see, hey, you have been paying attention. Here's your chance to play a little. Show us what you can do. And Chad Butler's done that. I mean, he's made some. He made a very, very good play there uh, on the, I believe it was yes, like it a four-yard reception. Yes, it was. All right, Spring Hill still in the shotgun. They're working on their passing game. Here's a pass thrown, and it's going to be intercepted, I believe. And, and guess Mr. who? Mr. Butler. Mr. Butler <laughs> did it, and he's got the ball very good. i tell you what, bragged on the man, and he comes and through And then he again. comes through right there. And Chad <laughs> Butler, I mean, paying attention, doing what he's supposed to like, do. Like we mentioned earlier, he sees the shotgun offense Spring Hill's running in practice. I'm sure he's glad to be able to tackle somebody else in a different in a different <laughs> colored jersey. Yes, <laughs> he is, and a, and, and a very good job way he fell back here, read the play, made the play, and actually had to go down and catch it. Yes, he did. I, I like it, and a very good play by Chad Butler. And it gives me a chance to say it one more time, the Butler did, did it. it. The fifth turnover that the Junction City defense has forced tonight. The first through the air by an interception and the other uh, by Spring Hill putting it on the ground. That's right. All right, Jarkel Brown, the quarterback, takes a direct snap. A great block by Chad Butler, and Jarkel is loose on the sideline. A nice gain. He slung out of bounds at about the 23-24 yard line, and Jarkel had. We got okay. We got a flag. Yeah, let's see what we're going to get here. But regard, regardless of the flag, yes. We see Brown in the shotgun. You know, we talk about Holyfield in the first half. And then you see Brown in the shotgun and what he can do. He just showed us right there. It was a 30-yard run. Just a direct quarterback, direct quarterback keeper. And Butler with a with a good block to help him get along the sideline and pick up about 15 more. But it will it will unfortunately that good play all around will be negated. Okay, they're going to back them up inside the Dragon 40. Jarkel Brown gets the direct snap. Hurdle leaps up and he gets hit and drives forth. And Jarkel Brown. Da-da-da, <laughs> da-da-da. <laughs> yeah, his best Reggie Bush. <laughs> A very good play by Jarkel. And let me go back again one more time so I can say Chad Butler's name. Great block by Chad. I believe the young man wants some coach. You need to look over here. Hey, I'm, Coach. I'm, uh, I'm, yes, sir. I'm look at me, here. Coach. I'm out here and I'm working hard. Yes, sir. I want a little more PT, and that's the way you do it. 3.15 to go, third quarter. And as we say in the business, the film does not lie. It will be there for the coaching staff to see. That's right. And that play goes nowhere. And I believe it was blown dead before the ball was dropped. Or is it? No, they're going to – the Junction City, I'm not sure because Junction City just – about six guys went off the field, six come on. And, no, the Dragons are going to keep it. It was blown dead third, and let's call it about seven for a first down. Junction City, mostly backups in the game now, especially at the position, you know, as far as the position to back up, it, it's some of the first string is in different positions. Here's a give to Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith, nowhere to go. It's fourth down and 2.20 to go in the third quarter. Junction City, as we mentioned earlier, will improve to 6-0 and, and, of course, retain the top spot in the state polls. Let's do a few shout-outs here real quick. Janelle Warren watching from Dallas, Texas. We are glad to have you with the Dragon Sports Network. 
Lori Temples is loving watching on her phone her son Blake McClellan, number 55, play. We're glad you're with us. A very bad snap. Jarkel's going to have to pick it up, and he's going to kick it. Oh. He gets it away. He gets hit hard. No flag. There, there won't be. And I won't be, I think, there on that yeah, one. There, no, won't won't be, there won't be snap. a flag on that. No. He, was, he was out of the position to uh, originally punt it. So, And now there's so, a the next, there's a flag on the Dragons' sideline. I believe that's what it's going to be. I'm not sure. Let's see here. Flag was thrown in the direction of the Junction City uh, sideline. A good a good job by Brown, though, to get the, to get the punt off. Yes. I mean, you know, an eight-yard punt, but the ball traveled about 40 yards in the air after the after he was able to chase it down. Yes, and that's, that's the thing about it. He had to hurry because the Bears had about three or four guys right on him. And I'm trying to see what the flag is. White had throwed it, and he wanted the head dragon to know that it was in his direction. And it's going, it's going to be against us. Unsportsmanlike, Unsportsmanlike conduct. Like conduct. I think it's going to be. It's, it was thrown on the dragon sideline, or on the yeah. And I believe, I'm not sure who. Coach Carpenter was not happy with what he saw out there, and that's when the flag came down. He walked out on the field. I'm not sure it was on him, but I'm. That's what I'm guessing. Okay, Spring Hill's going to open up a great field position right near the dragon 41st and 10. Here's a give the 21. He's got a little running room, and he will be brought down. By number 88, number 80, that's Chad Butler, Mike Williams, and I believe number 20, Sam Williams, also got in there. So that will probably, I think I can safely say this be the last play of the third quarter. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell our camera we're going to just stay right here and go ahead and go right on into the fourth quarter when they get ready. Spring Hill's going to try to hurry up and run one more play with seven seconds left. They get set, and I believe they will get the play off. Yes. Here's a give to number five. He cuts into the middle, a little running room. Down he goes. And he'll get to about the 20 yard line. That will be the end of the third quarter. Our score, 55-7, Junction City. Spring Hill trying to add a few more points to their total. And while we're at it, Jacob, Tell us a little bit about the banking industry there, our sponsor, First Financial. A proud sponsor of the Dragon Sports Network, First Financial, first, excuse me, First Financial Bank. Uh, they are a proud supporter in their continued tradition of excellence. We're, they're the only bank that's headquartered right here, in, right here in Union County where our customers live and work. If you're looking for a new way to bank that rewards you, then check out our new Casas accounts. Visit us on the web at www.ffb1.com to learn more or stop by any of our seven convenient Union County locations. You, Kasasa, you should. First Financial Bank, a proud supporter of Junction City Football and the Dragon Sports Network, member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. All right, and the title sponsor presenting this to you tonight, Eldorado Chemical. Do you know anybody out there that works at Eldorado Chemical? Maybe they're your neighbor or whatever. Go by and tell them a big thank you from the Dragon Sports Network for being our title sponsor. All right, first play of the fourth quarter is a handoff up the middle to Spr Spring Hills number number five. He picks up about six, seven yards. It'll be second down. Clock running, 11.45 left in the game, and the Dragons comfortably handling things 55-7. Spring Hill also doing some substituting, getting some guys some looks. And they've been uh, running in and out of the – switching between the shotgun and the wishbone. And the quarterback now back under center, and here's a handoff to the tailback and nowhere to go. Number 21 for Junction City on the tackle. Devontae Smith. Mr. Smith making a very good play, and it brings up third and about, let's call it five yards. Some more sponsors, Dragon Sports Network, STI Sims, Three Creeks Youth Ministry, Three Creeks Baptist Church, and the Accident and Injury Center of South Arkansas. Dr. Jed Frisbee, you got any back pains, problems, any aches, go by and see Dr. Jed Frisbee. All right, third and five. And Junction City's defensive line, said they were ready to get started. Yeah, definitely. So that will give the Bears a first down. It's hard to it's hard to fall to defensive line as a head coach. Yeah, you know you like you guys to, of course, wait for the ball to be snapped. But yep. you have to love the, you know, the enthusiasm and firing off the ball. They're ready ready to hit somebody. That, that's right. These guys, the dragons, the dragon reserves are. I mean, they're not going out there like, okay, gee, I'm in the game. They're going out there ready to roll. And that's how it should be. Yes. And that's the way it should be. Yes. 
right, here we go. Hand off again to the tailback, and he has popped hard. Number 34 on the tackle, Mason Gorman. And let me do a shout out to my old buddy, the ex North Leopard, Mr. Scotty Gorman. <laughs> and I'm heavy on the X. Yeah, heavy on the X. We, we had to take that North Leopard off of him, make a dragon out of him, and I think we've done it. Mason, a very good tackle there. He, like we've been talking about, he charged in there, wasn't no hesitation. So, loss on the play, second down. Let's call it a, well, excuse me, not a loss, but maybe a two yard gain. Here's a hard run up the middle near the goal line. Don't know if he's in. Yes, he is. Now they single it. Touchdown. So Spring Hill will get on the board. Uh, excuse me. Well, they'll get on the board for the second half with 9.33 left in the game. It's 55-13 now. And Junction City's reserves, I mean, they did a good job there. But Spring Hill made the play to get the score. So now they get ready. I believe they're going to kick. Yes, they're going to try the extra point. And I got to give the Spring Hill fans credit and all. A lot of, you know, a couple of them did leave out. But out to our right here, the stands are still basically full and the cheerleaders still going. And I mean, you're down 40 something points, but they're still cheering. And you got to appreciate yes, that. You, you do have to appreciate that. I mean, as we've talked about, mentioned several times tonight, a team picked. Pick the finish by Hooten, seventh in the, in, in, you know, in the 7-2A. Yes. You're coming off, uh, I believe they won one game in 2012. Junction shut them out 49 to nothing last year. So you come into this year, you're 4-1. You, 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 you have a chance to be in the driver's seat in your conference, chasing the conference title. And, that, you know, yeah, tonight's not going how, how they wanted it to. Right. You got to respect the fans sticking around, supporting their, supporting their boys and, 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 you know, fighting, fighting through with them. And here's the here's the main thing. Okay, you're going to lose this game, and that's one good thing. You know, the Spring Hill fans can look at. Okay, it's not a conference game. We we just played the number one team in the state who's on a 20 game winning streak. Next week we head back to conference. We still got a lot to play for. Definitely. And I yeah, I was watching them a while ago there, and, and there's still a lot of pep in them and everything. And and I like seeing that. Yeah. And of course over on the far side, the Dragon fans. We got a pretty good crowd tonight. Come to Hempstead County. And, of course, a Thursday night, it's kind of hard to get out and about. And an early kickoff uh, instead of 7.37, but still a good crowd. And those of you watching and listening on Dragon Sports Network, we're glad you're here with us. Next week, we're at home, back in conference play, and we're going to still do some bar hunting. We're going to go deal with some woodline bears, <laughs> the old AA bears. All right, here's the extra point. It is no, no, good. no good. So the score remains 55-13. 901 left in the ball game. And Junction City. Let's see who they put on the field, see if we got anybody. I believe everybody pretty well got in the game. And Coach Carter may try to change up a few of the, you know, like kick returns and see what we got. But I believe this is going to, no, this is going to be, he's going to bring his kickoff, uh, kickoff return unit. Those guys will come out. And the main reason he bring them out is to keep them, kind of keep them loose, keep, keep them, them fresh, going. Definitely. Yeah, keep them freshed up. Junction City, as I mentioned before, next week has Woodlawn, then I believe it's Hermitage, and then Parker Chapel, and that will conclude the regular season. And then it's time for the playoffs. And as we mentioned a while ago, Jacob, first round by, and then the second round, you're going to see somebody from the West. Now, tomorrow night being Friday, the Dragon coaching staff, I know for sure they're going out to do a little scouting. Who might they be taking a look at? Well, you have to, when talking about they have to stick with the 7 seven two a conference. You know, some teams at Spring Hill will play in Gurdon, in Dirks. Dirks also one of only four teams in the state in the 2A classification undefeated at 5-0. and oh. So they're also, you know, a top of the 7 a conference. So it could be, you know, Dirks, Gurdon, maybe even a Murfreesboro, teams like that. All right, the kickoff is fielded by Jarkel Brown. And Jarkel did the best thing possible. Did the best right thing there. possible. Did he just goes thing. down and takes the knee because he's not trying to put any more points on the board, really, as far as doing something like that. Let's let's try to get on out of here and get it over with and let the guys that's coming in now get some uh, reps and see what they can do. I believe our quarterback, and I believe he was in earlier, number 11 is Will Smith, sophomore. It's good to see him out there. Josh Larry checking in. Number five, Chad Butler's out there. Number 20, I believe is Sam Williams. And Mike Williams also, yes, is in. 
and we'll get the offensive lineman here in a second. All right, first and 10 from about the 28-yard line. Will Smith takes direct snap, and he's going to run with it and pick up about three, four yards on the play, and it will bring up second down and about seven. 68, uh, 68 Michael Smith on the offensive line is in the game. Number 70, Corey Kemp. Number 55, I believe. Uh, yeah, 55, Blake McClellan, 63, Colton Pratt. All in the ball game now for the Dragons. Splitting out wide to, wide to our side, number 80, Chad Butler. Smith takes a snap. He will hand off this time. Oh, Sam Williams, who was fixing to make a cut. He, <laughs> I he believe had, he was looking for the end. Yeah, time. he had bigger plans on that run. Just lost his footing coming out, coming out of the gate. And I think they'll actually lose a yard right there, but <laughs> would have been a a hard run right there by number 20, Sam Williams, had He's, he not lost his foot. Yes, sir. He saw the hole, and he <laughs> was on his way. All right, it's going to be third down and a, eight yards to get the first down. Smith in the gun. He's going to give this time to number 21, Smith. There's nowhere to go. He's wrapped up and brought down hard. It will be fourth down for Junction City. Also on the offensive line in the game, D.J. Brown, number 56, has checked in. So fourth down, the Dragons will punt it away. And we have a flag a late now, flag is A very late flag. Whitehead, I mean, the Junction East. City was sending the punt unit on. It's on Spring Hill. That was uh, I believe. too many guys on the field. Four, five, six. Uh, no. Three, six, seven. Eight. Yes. Yes, too many yeah, guys too many. on the field. And and last couple of plays, Spring Hill had been running two or three, four guys at a time. I think so, that's I mean, what the happened mix up, there. mix up was bound to happen. But Junction City, it gets them closer to a first down. Going about a yard and a half away, but the Dragons, uh, it's not a very good snap, but he gets it and puts it foot into it, and it's going to die. Well, it hits Dragon player number seven, Clondre Evans, at about the 35-yard 30, line. Yes. So, 5.47 left in the game. Junction City 55, Spring Hill 13, and it's the third time these two teams have met. First time was in 2004, and Junction City won that game as in the playoffs. And then last year, as you mentioned, Dragons won, I believe that was homecoming, and ten, then tonight, so Junction City will now lead the series, three games to zip. Dragons send the same, basically the same unit back out on the field they had a little while ago, as far as defense. Spring Hill in the bone. Here's a give and a hard Big lick. Hit. Who was that? 82. For 82. 82. Mike Williams, nice tackle by Mike. And be a yard game, bring up second and nine with five minutes left to go, clock running. And Junction City doing a lot of substituting now. Lane Wood back in. Will Smith checks in. Cojan Pratt still out there. Sailor Wilson, Mason Gorman, Chad Butler. All right, here's a rollout to give to the fullback. The quarterback, he fooled me there, trying to – did a good job of it. <laughs> I think he got the cameraman too. And there will be no gain, a hard lick there. Number 33 carrying, but he gets up. And that's something else, these Spring Hill players, they've taken a, quite a few licks tonight, Jacob, but they're they, tough they, guys. Yes, they keep, they, they keep getting back up and they keep going after it. And it's, it's especially hard to do in an offense like the one they run, that one that Junction City is very familiar with, the wishbone. They even run out of the triple option some. some. So you're, you know, you got guys in your face quickly and you're getting pot playing to play out, but you just keep coming back for more. And, you know, that has to be a positive that the Spring Hill coaching staff is going to bring out of this game. You know, 55-13, most would think there's not many positives, but that has to that has to be one at least at the top of the list. And, you know, you, you mentioned earlier they still got some fire in them. We was talking about the band. You said these players still got some fire in them. There's a and lot to coaches, play for. Th those coaches are going to look at that and say, you know what, look here, guys, you got it handed to you. We made some mistakes. They made us pay for it on top of that, but you kept playing. And you learned from it. And as we mentioned, it. a lot to play for yes. for them. And you learn from it. The same thing that the Junction City coaching staff is going to tell their players, of course, from another another point of view, hey, you beat them pretty badly, but there's things we got to work on. That's right. Okay, the Bears ready to go. Here's a give to the, I believe that was one of the halfbacks. 
It's going to be a pickup of about two yards on it. Number 56, six. DJ Brown on the tackle. Josh Larry in the game. Number 30 checking in for Junction City is Daniel Cope. Another sophomore, so it's good to see all these guys getting a little PT here with 2.53 left in the game. Spring Hill faces a fourth and six, and of course they're going for it. Here's the pitch to the halfback. He cuts. He gets to the outside and is going to get the first down. And the referee's going to flag him. Yeah. I'm not really. That's a, that's, oh, a hard, that's a hard play right there. You got the safety in a corner coming over the top. They're not sure if the running back stepped out of bounds or not. They, they don't hear a whistle. It's aggressive play. Once again, it goes back to the Armstrong play at the, in the first half. That's not, yep. a, that's not a cheap play right there. That's no. just guys trying to be aggressive. Nobody, you know, nobody's hurt on the play, and that's just – you know, it's kind of, I guess you call it a technicality. You really can't, really can't do anything about that. No, I, I, of course, I, you know, let me go on the record and say I don't agree with that. Oh, you know, that, that, not that at call, all. That call, not I at mean. all, not at all. But it, it does, you know, it's like I said, it's aggressive play. You know, let's let it go. 159 left in the game, and a good hard run up the middle by number five for Spring Hill. He is near a first down, and the Bears trying to get a, another touchdown here before the game ends. 145 and counting. They are coming in and out of the huddle very fast. All right, number five gets it and is brought down, pushed back by DJ Brown, Williams, and Chet, excuse me, Cope. All three in on the play. Man, they, like as we mentioned, it has calmed down a little bit up here in the stands, but uh, earlier it was kind of rambunctious. And I'd like to give a shout out to all the former Dragons out there that are listening that have been through the two a days and been through the, the grind of fall camp and have played the long seasons that have sweat and, you know, sweat and bled for the for the purple and gold because a, a gentleman up here did say about the midway through the first quarter, <laughs> they're wearing down. And, uh, you know, to all them former Dragons out there, we know that's never the case. Never wear down. You know, you sign on for 15 weeks like a former coach, Mr. Mike Barrett, said. And, you know, that's Dragon football. So, shout out to all the former Dragons following us tonight. All right. It's fourth and a yard. And they're going to get the first down with 40 seconds to go. When he said that, you know, folks, uh, <laughs> just that we're over here on, on the Spring Hill side. And I believe it was probably the loudest mouth in Hempstead oh, County right yes, beside it. And yes. he wanted us to know what he thought about Junk City football. And when he said that, I, you know, it actually made Where, me stop. I had I to thought, look around. I, 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 <laughs> did he say what I thought he said? They're wearing down? <laughs> oh, the head dragon will love that. 14 seconds to go. This should be, should be the last play of the game. Bears trying to get another touchdown. Fighting hard for it. And six seconds, five seconds, four. They're not going to Two, get it. That'll be it. It is over with. Junction City improves to 6-0 and on the season. The Dragons win it 55-13. to And your post-game show is brought to you by our title sponsor. Presenting it, Elder Rata Chemical. Our other sponsors, of course, as always, allow me to go over them again. Junction City Florist, Junction City Pharmacy, McDonald's Grocery, the Accident and Injury Center of South Arkansas, Three Creeks Baptist Church, Three Creeks Youth Ministry, STI Sims, First Financial Bank, Hog Wild Pest Control. Glad to have them all with us on the Dragon Sports Network. Junction City wins it 55-13. Let's go over a few numbers. The first thing, 20 wins in a row. Jacob, won't you remember that? Because in a minute, I want to ask you something about that. Of course, uh, next week, go back into conference play. We'll finish with conference play. And if they can win out in conference, we'll tie the school record for longest winning conference winning streak at 23 games. As we talked about Spring Hill a while ago, a lot to play for. Junction City, of course, a heck of a lot, a lot to, to play, play for. for. Yes. Uh, you're talking about let's finish off conference. Let's win in. Let's get that top seed for the playoffs. Let's get that first round by. And as Coach Carpenter, his favorite special, all that good stuff. Tough. First thing first, let's talk about what you saw tonight. Give us your thoughts on that. Oh, when you, go, when you go back to the first half, you look at the first unit. I mean, I have the stats here for the first half. 
you know, yes, we're without Dance tonight. He's day by day. We are, you know, hoping that he can re- can recover. His family was listening tonight from, uh, I believe, Mar- Mar- Up Mar- from Marlboro, Marlboro, Maryland. Maryland. Sure were. And, uh, but, you, but you look at the other guys. Bo Hooks, 18th birthday, three receptions, 53 yards. Okay, you know, three big catches, three huge catches. Each end of the field, put them down inside the five. Very next play, both drives led to touchdowns. 47 yards and a touchdown from, I believe, Jonathan Mitchell. Big catch. And then Holyfield, 11 of 12, 163 yards and a touchdown. The only one that was dropped was one. It wasn't dropped. It was broken up. That would have went for a touchdown had it been caught. The one we talked about, a little more ump on it, 80 yards. Yes. So, yeah, 80 yards. So as a coaching staff, when you look at the film from the first half and even from the second half, there's a lot of positives. I mean, you come over here, you make the trip Thursday night, you know, wh- where's my team sitting? You know, it's at a conference. How are we going to respond? Look at the scoreboard, 55-13. I say they responded really well. And against a team, one more time, let me throw this in, picked to finish seventh in their conference, currently battling for the top spot with yes. a 4-1 and one record. And, uh, and overall, we have to say, especially when all the reserves got to play and everything, everybody got in the game, did a uh, darn good job. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you see you see guys playing hard. I mean, we talked about Chad Butler there for, you know, a good seven to eight minutes because he, he makes an open field tackle that if he did, that if he doesn't make, guys, guys got a bunch of green grass in front of him. Junction gets the ball back because of a Chad Butler interception. He makes a block on a Jarkel Brown run. I mean, you got guys, Mason Gorm, you got guys just all over the field that don't see a bunch of time early in, early in games making plays, playing hard. And when, when you have all, however many people on the team committed to the cause, then then you, you're you're sitting you're sitting you're sitting where you want to be sitting. Okay, you you mentioned those two, uh, both Butler and Mason Gorman, who we saw out there really making some plays, are sophomores. So that's that's why a game like this, you say, okay, it's over with. Now this is a game you want to stick around and watch. I want to see how this kid's going to respond. I want to see how this kid is going to do. And you see a Mason Gorman and a Chad Butler get out there. And Devontae Smith. A Devontae Smith. Mike and Williams. they're making plays. I mean, plays. just guys all over. I mean, we can just, right. just go down the roster. We can't name them all right now, but I mean, you just go down the roster and guys that are out there may not made a tackle, but because they were in position, you know, another guy made the tackle. And then the coach can turn around, Coach Carpenter, Coach Smith, or Hutchison, or Thompson, and they say, look here, this is what we're looking for from you. Someday you're going to have to step take charge of this program. You're going to be a senior, or you may be in your hands. starting, yes. and you've got to get out there and show us what you got. Now, let's look ahead a little bit. Three games left, conference. What's Coach Carpenter do? Well, as you mentioned earlier, the goals. I mean, you, you, you have to tear them up, so to speak. The first one, conference championship, but you can't get ahead of yourself. Got to take it a week at a time. You want that first round by, that is huge. Get to the playoffs, as we've mentioned, could very well be a team if Junction is to get the bye in the second round, a team from the 7 seven double A. You know, possibly a Gurdon or a Dirks, or maybe even a Spring Hill if, if things should go there, you never know. And then you, you, see, you see that happening, and so you just got to take it a week at a time that's right. As the Dragons. And, you know, as you were saying earlier, we hope there's nine more games. The winning streaks, how much of a role does that play? And I think I've asked you this before, but as, as it progresses along, uh, the state media, whenever I sent out the email, so they start, they're asking about it. Now, how many in a row is it for Junction City? What does Coach Carpenter, let's go over this again, what does Coach Carpenter tell his team, and how much does it really weigh in, if at all? It's it's the numbers. It's it's what you know. Sports fans like me and you talk about. We're talking about it right now. What, what we love to see the numbers. They're on a, they're on a big winning streak. This guy's done this. This guy's done that. That's what people love to hear. But as a team, it's all about it's all about the guy next to you. You, you can't get caught up. And it's easy to get caught up when you read the post game articles on Saturday morning to you know hear about the records that are being broke and the records that are being set and all this and that. But it's about the guy next to you, and it's about taking it easy, one game at a time, focusing in, and you know trying to reach your ultimate goal. Was what we just talked about. 
Coach Carpenter, one thing he talked about a lot in our production meeting earlier and something we was going to go over with in, in the pregame, and let's just mention this real quick, and then we got to get the heck out of Hempstead County. He talked about the nine techs, how well they've been playing. He said, people sometimes look, he said, take for instance, Byron Jones, you know, up at Arkansas, has got a lot of tackles. He said, but Byron's engaging two guys every play. He said, our defensive line here is doing an outstanding job. They're engaging the block, they're taking them on. The nines are forcing, channeling all the action back into the middle. And guess who's waiting on them? Number four. four. Mr. Josh Armstrong. And you can ask Josh. I know Josh, coached him in the seventh grade. You know, how are you having this success? Yeah, a lot of it, he's flying to the football. He's making plays yes, he all is. over the field. But when it comes down to it, it's the nine ticks. The guy's forcing the ball back inside, setting the edge on sweeps. You set that edge, the next thing you know, you see a flash. It's number four. The dust settles, and it's number four. So, I mean, four, Josh, he gets the tackles. But, it, you know, it's, it's, that, it's that front seven. It's also the guys in the back, back four. Everybody's making plays. And here's the thing. Six games complete now. Six games complete. Josh Armstrong is averaging 16 tackles a game. I believe the last number we got from the Rev, he put that Huddick High Education to work and told us 98 tackles on the year. 98 tackles with possibly, possibly nine games to go. There's no telling us what this guy can do. Folks, it's been great. Uh, we apologize for getting late on the air, but as we mentioned, we got on there. And let me do a couple shout-outs to Mr. Josh Ayers, who tonight helped the Rev with the stats and everything. Ricky the Rev Watts over here. I tell you what, we never get them on the camera. Hey, put them on there. That's the Rev, folks. We're about the only ones left now. And some of the infamous Dragon video crews sneaking up on us. <laughs> for Jacob Pumphrey, Melissa Pumphrey, the lovely studio hostess, the June Bug, Mr. Derek Watts on the camera. I'm Wayne Pumphrey. You have been watching Dragon Football on the Dragon Sports Network presented by Eldorado Chemical. Good night to all and have a great weekend. And you're off. All right. <laughs>